Right. Setting up my meeting for Facebook. Oh, here he is. Ha <laughs> ha! Ah, eventually. Sorry, my man. Sorry. Oh, God. There we go. Uh, you all right, fella? Hey, Dean. How are you? I'm fine, mate. You're looking at all these days. You look a bit uh, seasoned. <laughs> Sorry, not set old. I'll say seasoned. I'll yeah, say se better word for it, eh? <laughs> yeah, we've got more hair than me. That's why the hat's on. <laughs> only just, only just these days. Yeah. How you been keeping? Very good in this uh, crazy world at the moment, yeah. mate. Yeah, yeah, very good. Um, everybody's fitting well around me, which is a fairly big bonus. Yeah. 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 Knocking back the autographs from your appearance on the Great Britain documentary. <laughs> that were brief on it, eh? Yeah, we're a good, um, good documentary, that. Yeah. How was it? How was the Lions tour? Um, it, it was interesting. It was tough, obviously, from a results perspective. You know, it's tough to, you know, go and work for your country and at the, the highest, highest level, really, and not get not get the results that um, that, that you want is, is obviously tough. But um, a really enjoyable tour, you know, travelling the world again. It's It's a... So it's some brilliant times, really. But yeah, the, you, you know, when you don't get the results, it yeah, puts a bit of a sour, a sour taste on it. Yeah, yeah. It, it, experiences are amazing. Um, did you do uh, the World Club Challenge with the Eagles when they they did Perth and Hunter? I did. Yes, I did. <laughs> I did. I did. It was yeah. That was another great um, opportunity and a, a great experience. Still talk about that now. Definitely. Everybody says it. Everybody came back. It was in. A, it was the day that it was the. Uh, sorry, it was the couple of weeks that reinvented the Eagles and everybody came together. And it just you just went on from there when you come back, and it would just revitalize. And you just went on with the the Premiership semi, and then the Wembley one, one came straight after it the following year. Yeah, okay. definitely. We went to that Premiership semi final in, in uh, great spirits, and I can remember coming off the back of that, thinking that the pre season would. Um, would lead us into something fairly special, and obviously it it, it did that year. Um, but yeah, the the I think galvanizes the tour galvanizes a little bit, and then leading into the preseason, like I said, I think that were another um, really big moment in that mm. lead up to the to the Challenge Cup the year after, definitely. Yeah. Right, let's go back away back. How come you? How did you end up managing signing for the Eagles all them years ago? Uh, well, I played at, at my amateur club, uh, Kippox, um, and I can remember, um, yeah, Steve, I was probably one of the smallest in the team at the time. I, I always played at, at, at um, half at, at standoff, and um, yeah, I, I remember Steve Ferris um, coming up to watch me playing for Kippox on the 17s, um, and and saying that he, he liked the, the, the way I played, and um, I remember playing against Ryan Sheridan, and we ended up we ended up actually signing pretty much at a very similar time. Um, a completely different player to me. Shares obviously a way mature beyond his years. He was fast and, and I was still mature. I don't think I matured till I got to about 19, 20 and Shares were, Shares were just dynamite. And I can remember playing against Shares and we signed within probably a few weeks of each other and we ended up playing for the academy um, within a few months. Um, yeah, so Kippock's amateur team and then and then signed with the Eagles. Uh, Gary Everton, obviously, was, was head coach at that time. He signed me on um, at 17 years old. The academy side had some right players in there at the time because they had Joe Sheridan, Allen, uh, they had Jason Davidson, who was at Leeds Rhinos. They had some cracking players that all went on to bigger and bigger and bigger things in rugby league, didn't you? Really? Yeah, and I, and I think they the did. And I think... Um, we had some cracking players that actually didn't make it as well, which you can, you know, throughout, I think, English rugby league can say that, especially from some of the amateur days and stuff. Some of the best players don't want to make it um, for, for one or two reasons. Um, but, yeah, we had some we had some cracking players and, and there's a few still involved in the game. I would say, obviously, Shez, Ryan Sheridan coaching with me at the moment at, at Castleford Tigers and, um, and Jason Davis and he's... You know, he's gone on to great things with Leeds. I mean, there's, there's not many more decorated um, SNC coaches around the world, I reckon, never mind in, in England than, than Jason. Yeah, still still later, though. I still remember the school trips with Jason. Hmm. I'm not saying anything <laughs> else about him. 
then development days will always stay stay hidden. I'll never forget them days as long as I live. Oh, watching all the kids coming and walking past you going, wow, Eagles players. And we're going, yeah, 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 they're here all the time. Yeah, they're here all the time. Um, when, we, when you signed for the club, I mean, was there anybody else that came in for you? Was it just Eagles all the way? It was just uh, Eagles and that was it? Yeah, it were, we it were mainly uh, Sheffield. Uh, Castleford, had, Castleford were doing a, a, a different thing at that time. Obviously, it's my hometown club. They were they were asking players to to go and just play for the academy without really dangling any signing on fees or anything. And for a strange time, so obviously you want to stay with your with your mates. But but we had we had three of us signed on exactly the same time, or well, four of us really. Um, there were Alan Boyer, Christopher Price, and, and Glenn really Malcolm's son. That we all signed on sort of at a similar a similar time. So there were four of us went down there. But my other friends, a, a lot of them, my best friend Paul Dalio played at, at Featherstone and, and stuff. He, they all just went and played for Castleford Academy, but there were no sort of signing on fee then. It was more or less a come and play for his academy and and see how you go. So so yeah, we um we signed we signed that contract. Um and then we ended up, like I said, with Ryan Sheridan, we ended up going down there and um, and staying away from Castleford, really. But so yeah, Sheffield were the only club really that oh. that came in for me. Yeah. yeah, I always remember you with the uh, being the only stand, only winger I've ever seen in Super League with number six on his back. Yeah. Always like that, saying, "What's going on here?" What? Yeah. <laughs> it was I never, always... I never played on the wing ever. Ever. <laughs> ever. Yeah. I played at six, centre, uh, fullback. Never ever played on the wing. Yeah. You didn't do too bad on the wing at the Eagles, especially in a certain day in May in 98, though. Yeah, it was a strange uh, transition, <laughs> really. I think it was John John Keir. Um, obviously, he was the one to, to try me there. And I don't think it was, it was... It wasn't by planning and saying he wanted me there. I think it was one night um, someone had pulled out. It might have been Bright Sodji or even John Mark Garcia. Um, we played at home against Castleford and we didn't... I don't think we had a, a winger. And, and I, I'd just come back from earlier repair and they just said play on the wing uh, outside Keith and obviously the rest is history struck up quite a good partnership with him and I and I will never never have blistering pace I won't, I won't really look to it as a as a winger but I think me um my head for a for the standoff role and, and rugby knowledge sort of helped a little bit with that and obviously <laughs> outside Keith helped a little bit as well and um yeah so we struck up a decent partnership yeah. ended up being um a decent career for me yeah. and from the wing really yeah one hell of a partnership. I'll say it straight now. One hell of a partnership. There were no, no one. So you were close then. Would you play with Castleford when Keith did the famous punch on that Barry John Mather? Was you the closest yeah, that, one to him? Yeah, that was a quarter final. Yeah, I remember, <laughs> it well. I remember it well. I mean, obviously, it was my hometown club as well. So to get, to get that win in the quarter final, which obviously led us to that that famous cup win in '98, that were um, that were a fairly um, fairly big game that for us, especially for myself. Yeah, when when John Keir came in and said that famous when he says if we're gonna we're gonna Wembley this year, what was the feeling with you guys? It was like, is he on something here or what? No, it, oh, it was weird. Like, like I said, we we struck up that um, that bit of confidence leading out of um, '97, and um, I think we just had a the feel about it that we were gonna actually win something. Obviously, we did him out the 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 Challenge Cup and and we got a decent draw um yeah but we also won some tough games as well uh, along the way and obviously the final one for the big one yeah yeah I remember the I remember the run I think I think everybody started to get a feeling when it was a quarter final because this was unknown territory for the Eagles it was like hold on we're quarter final we're on grandstand no less as well so it just started to get feelings inside and going this is actually something going on here and I just remember. I used to work at Sheffield Wednesday before that Wembley one and everybody was clambering me, asking me for tickets. And I'm like, why do you want tickets? Because, oh, yeah, but you're going to Wembley. And I said, not yet. We've got a couple of games to go. But yeah. then the, sem the semi-final came in and um, Wembley itself. I mean, what's your favourite memories of the day itself at Wembley? Um, it, do you know what? It, it goes it goes that fast. And uh, I spoke to my uncle, um, Sammy Lloyd, who, who had the opportunity to play there, luckily with all um, early 80s. Um, and, and he just said to me, look, this, these, days, these days absolutely fly by, so take it all in. And I actually did. Um, I remember massively um, the meetings before, John Keir the night before, were really emotional, got us all really revved up for it. Um, 
and then the day itself, I just remember the massive change in rooms and not being used to used to stuff like that, you know, on the international front or anything. Um, yeah, and, and so that was that was and then I just remember going out, even even then feeling really confident and Johnny Lawless and people like that who were vocal shouting and Tubby shouting 98, that was the, sh- the call we had. Um, and so, it, yeah, we, we, were, we were full of confidence. I think you, you see, and you know what? I haven't watched it back loads of times, you know. I just haven't and because it, it, it does live with me. I, I can still tell you probably minute for minute most of the stuff that were happening. And, and as we walked out, there were a confidence around us and you can see that in the, in the tunnel. From the from the replays and stuff of, of, of the Challenge Cup final, and, and I think there were confidence in us. And obviously, Wigan were, were massive favourites. You know, the side they had, they, they were massive favourites. But like I said, we had we had the confidence. Um, and then yeah, there's just the old day. Um, I took most of it in. My family were there watching me. Yeah, well, it was awesome, an awesome day. Yeah, and just so everything going there and all of a sudden ball comes flying to the left hand side you picks it up the big old mitre balls I can't believe how small a rugby league ball is these days it's side of the big balls from the late 90s I mean the difference is crazy it's, I'm like how the hell do you how the hell do you pass the ball in them days but yeah, uh, just the, like you, see all, you see all our wingers and especially the classics like um, Tom Johnson and Tommy Tommy Makinson you know, diving into the corner with the big dive over them, the, the one-handed put downs. You'd have actually had three hands to grab the jump <laughs> ball back in them days and slip a little bit slippier and stuff. But yeah, um, they were great to get on the, the scoreboard, obviously, and be one a, a try scorer um, at Wembley. Yeah, can you imagine the same rules as you when when you was on the wing? Now we all these diving and all these putting one finger on the ball and all this. That yeah. you would like to be hilarious. It'd be. <laughs> You know, the people ask you that and you go, well, would you would you have adapted just the same as these players today do? Yeah, you probably would. But, you know, some of the some of the guys now are just freaks. Yeah. They're, they're absolute freaks. Yeah. How did you adapt from the from the winter time? Because you signed for the Eagles, like you said, with this academy side. And then you went, then Super League came along, which was like from winter to summer. I mean, did you just adjust? Was it was like, oh, great, we can train in the summer now? Or it was like, God, Bennett, there's 30 odd degrees here and we're running around here. Yeah, it, it was it was strange transition that I, I do remember it, but only only vaguely to be honest, Dean. That's not one of the transitions that sticks in my head at all. I, I, I were injured during that time, which was the 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 story of my career really, all all throughout. Um, so yeah, I, I I don't remember the transition that much, um, but I remember always always thinking that. A bit of a traditionalist. I didn't particularly like it. I liked the pre-season in summer, which that's completely flipped now. And and you know we're finding it at Castle at the minute. You know pre-season is quite tough, tough at the minute with with the weather. Yeah, yeah. Um, Katie, Pete in our chat room is asking: Is there a reason you don't watch it back? Mark Aston says exactly the same thing. Um, do you know what? There the isn't, I, I, and I, I, I couldn't tell you why I haven't watched it back. Um, I, I reckon it's because it probably. I, I know what it will like. I don't. I don't really need to relive it. Um, yeah. I've got two kids now. I'm little lads, not massively into rugby. Um, and, and I think if he was, and obviously they want me to play it back, I would have played it back. But no, it's it's just something that I remember most of it. I'll be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Not much, even even detail of me yeah. within the game. Mm-hmm. I remember most of them. Yeah. Uh, where's your medal? It, it's actually. And my mum and dad's <laughs> brilliant. They were one, I, mean, I saw one on sale last year on Facebook. I think Marcus Vasilakopoulos, 18th man or something, and he was selling this medal to raise some funds for the young lad in That's Canada. Right. I think it was That's right, yeah. And yeah. uh, I, I was going crazy because I had a bit of money at the time, and I'm like, I'm bidding for this, Not I'm going it. for this. And I went up to about 380 quid, and literally, this guy says, No, we've, we've I've got a bit of 550, and I went, Fantastic, right. I'm out. <laughs> so but uh, oh, I think when you look back and you, your medals and stuff, I mean, other oh, question from Katie is: Is uh, how did you how did it all become that you wanted to be a physio? Where did that all come from? Um, spent that much time, I think, in the treatment room with um, our ex physio Alan Tomlinson and a couple more. Um, I think it was just something that I were always going to do. Now I made the decision probably um, probably a year before. I actually finished whilst I were at Hull, so not when I were at Sheffield. Um, mm. 
probably when I were at home, I made the decision that that's what I wanted to do. And my plan was to not go out of the game as quickly as I actually did. My plan was to stay in the game, maybe drop down the league and, and play part-time uh, and then go to uni and, and, and do it that way. But obviously, my season came to a, a fairly abrupt end. Um, and so it just it just forced me forced me on, really, which you know, sometimes you look at it as a bad thing. But then, you know, I've done all right since. So it's life, and it sometimes you... You get dealt them in bad hands, and you have to you have to deal with it pretty quick. Yeah. You've not done too bad. Not done too bad. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, not done too bad at all. So I was still like being part of the uh, Chef Regal's contingent at Castleford then with uh, Davil and uh, Ryan. Oh, it's awesome. It, it it really is. I think that's what makes us so close. Um, obviously, when me and when me and Chef signed, um, you had big names in the Sheffield Eagles team like Davil Powell and Paul Broadbent. And one or two overseas signings, I could, could go on forever with them, Mick Cook. And, and so that when we signed on as kids, they looked after us, really. You know, as 16, 17-year-old kids. And then um, then you go away from it, Dow signs Leeds and Shez, and then I go to Hull, and, and then I finish and go into physio. And then um, we go back to get together at Featherstone, our Castleford youth, and then I go to Featherstone, and then, it, then, then we go to Castleford together. So it's been a, about an eight-year journey now, and it's been a, it's been a good one. It's been a really good yeah. one. Yeah, how was it last year with Super League? I mean, our last season, I think, with the COVID thing and everything like that. I mean, one minute you're playing, and the next get 24 hours notice that your opponents changed. And how did it affect it? Really tough, really tough. But we, it, it, you know, my, my job's gone from one of the most enjoyable jobs you imagine it. You you lived your life as a rugby league player, and you go and expect best thing really. And um, yeah, it was tough because it's not just the uncertainty of playing week to week. It's it's serious stuff, this, and and you're the one that's dealing with it and trying to get the, the lads on board with all the different protocols and processes that the RFL are putting in on onto you. And it, it it's a tough it's a tough ask, a tough ask. I almost called it an impossible task. And and I think you saw through through the the league when we come back after the COVID breakup. Um, I think you saw the difficulty and the RFL got a tough job, a really tough job to, to, to run back. And and we've got an even tougher job at the at the ground level trying to run it. And obviously facilities and everything come into it. But yeah, I think we've been I think we've been awesome with it. You know, we had a, we didn't we had an outbreak, but we there were some there were some um, things thrown at us that were just out of our hands and it was just it was so it was so difficult. And and yeah, we got we got quite a a rough ride with fixtures directly after COVID. You know, we played the top three teams in three weeks and changed fixtures midweek, like I just said, had 48 hours to, to prepare for for these games. And it, it was, it's been a real tough ask and it's still going on. It's still going on. Yeah, I know. It's, I, I, I mean, I'm, I, I'm allowed out once a day, but I can't imagine what it's like with you guys. I really, really can't. It's, it's just another world these days. And like I just said, I've had my vaccine today, so. <laughs> yeah, very good. Um, like we said, I mean, Katie's just asking our chat. Well, my Katie's coming in with loads of questions for you. Well, I think she was—you must have been one of her favourites. She has to be. Um, she said, "She says, are you still in touch with a lot of the players?" Um, yes, um, definitely. I mean, I, I speak to to Mark Aston sometimes throughout the year. Um, we've been known to have a camping trip or meet up on them. Um, in the last sort of ten years, um, Johnny Lawless was keeping touch. We've got we've got groups, WhatsApp groups now. You know, two, uh, 1998 WhatsApp groups and stuff like that. So yeah, John King is in it. Keith does still does the RFL as as Johnny does. You know, the the IL cares and stuff. So yeah, yeah we we still keep in touch. Obviously, it's, you go your different ways, don't you? But we yeah. still have that, we still have that still have that bond definitely. Yeah, and uh, she's also asking which was your favourite club you played for. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, that that that's an easy one, isn't it? Because um, I was there the longest, and and I had my fondest memory of, of the Challenge Cup, nineteen ninety-eight. So it has to be Sheffield, Katie. Yeah, oh, I think. Well, she, I mean, I know I remember this as a time that I I think I had the biggest bust ups with Mister Rimmer and Mister Adams. Um, end of ninety-nine, get told that you're merging with Huddersfield. And uh, off, all of a sudden, everybody gets in and gets, gets up, lock, stock, and barrel, and moves up to Huddersfield. How did it affect you guys? I mean, Johnny, we had Johnny on the show last year, 
and he was saying about that there were lads that were training and they were on three, four times the amount of money that you was on and you were playing in the same team as them. And that must have had an awful effect on you guys. Yeah, unfortunately, that's that's quite true, that. And um, although you know, we had a really, really good good culture at Sheffield, uh, and I think we, we'd grown together, obviously, with the Challenge Cup win. And, um, you know, we, had some, we had some players that were classed as mediocre that had actually flourished at that club and, and played well, and we'd got, we got into a position where we were. And then that, that came about, it was a tough old ask um, to, to do that. Having said that, having said that, it, it almost... It sent me on a different path, and um, I'll always be grateful for for any for any club, and and you know I just feel that it was still a it was still a good club to, to to play for. We had some good times. I met some other other friends from 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 that side of the from the others field side, and you know, and it, it was just one of them things we had to we had to deal with. But it was a tough year, that real tough yeah. year. I was going through me my worst injury period then. I, I just had my ACL repaired on after the Challenge Cup final. Yeah. I were only just fit and, and I wasn't really fit. I had to go in again for another knee operation, which kept me out for four or five months. And that, that couple of years for me were, were, were really tough to get over. Mm. And the others field year. And luckily, I, I, I played for Scotland um, that year, the end of 99, 2000, which, which that's when Sean McRae um, signed me at all. So, you know, then, then three, three years obviously followed. Yeah. How did you qualify for Scotland? <laughs> um, my dad. Ah, there we go. They were born in Parkhead in Glasgow, so he's, you know, he's a... He's a yeah. yeah, so how was it playing in the World Cup for Scotland? How was that? Yeah, one of my fondest memories, for sure. And, and I, won't, I wasn't really fit either, so I think I got on the bench and started a game and stuff, but mm. I wasn't fit. I'd had four or five months. I'd only played the last game for others field, something mm. like that. I was nowhere near fit, fit enough, um, so... But yeah, to be involved in that wall were class. Yeah. I think one of my favorite, more than funniest memories I've got of watching oh, it was it was the debut of Sheffield Huddersfield Giants on Grandstand. And there was a it was, I think it was five minutes into the game, and Dale Lawton was the captain. And he had a, it was going I was having a chat with a ref. I know you saw it was a Bradford Bulls player coming to him, and I can't swear, but it was Fox Trot Oscar, you you so and so. And it was live on TV, and it was the first matches. The referee was mic'd up, so all you heard was Dale come out with his four-letter tirade, <laughs> straight at his. And the commentary was going, "We've got to apologise for what you've just heard on the TV." Yes, we're trying a new thing out. It's called micing up the referee, and I'm like, "This will never happen again." And you just you just heard Dale go full whack at this guy, and I'm like, "No yeah, way." He's- in his really broad Barnsley accent. <laughs> yeah. I think, and it's, I mean, Johnny came up and said about the funny times he had on the pitch, being in the scrum and some people saying, yeah, he's mine, I'm having him. And all of a sudden, uh, coming out of the scrum with a couple of black eyes that they didn't realise they went into the scrum with. Um, I mean, have you got anything, I think the Paris game, did you play with the Paris game, the first Super League game? I did, yeah. How was that? Well, well, that was a culture shock. It was, it was. It just we went into that game confident we'd we'd win it, and obviously we we didn't. We got, we got beat. One of the worst games I've played in that, I think. And mm-hmm. and again, I I, I won't really I, I on the wing that 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 day as well. And I, I wasn't really a wing at that time, and I had no practice there. And and just mm-hmm. yeah, the, the game was. It was just we didn't like the full trip and everything. Just goes down to me as the worst I were on. I think I just mm-hmm. yeah. It, okay. Well, it wasn't wasn't a good experience in my um, rugby league career. That one. Uh, Kate is asking. She doesn't recall Davil being such a miserable sod as he comes across now on the box. We always had a laugh with him at Sheffield. What's happened to him? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kate, Kate, you've got to understand. There's a bit more, a little bit more pressure on him now. I think. Mm. He's not done too bad. He's he's always been at the first of Sheffield, the first Yorkshire. First Great Britain, and to to see all the Eagles lads now. I mean, I sit back and I go, I can't remember used to come into our development room to escape it and say, "Have you got any coffees going?" and all this. And yeah. Keith Senior burning his head on the radiator because he just shaved his head and just yeah. leapt back in his chair and he got a third degree burn on the back of his head. The yeah. memories are memories are great. I think Alan Tomlinson, like you said, the physio that did you. I denied my ACL at the same time as you did yours, and I remember saying, he said to me, he says. Do you want to train the same as Matt? And I went, yeah, go on. Worst mistake of my life because I didn't realise how hard he, this, this guy would train me. 
And I'm yeah. my knee, knees never. I've never had a problem with my knees since. I just did it to the letter of the law. But I just remember him. I used to call him every name impossible. That guy. I mean, yeah. I don't think Messi. I don't think Alan ever got the credit he deserved really for the Sheffield guys because when he was physio, the guy was a legend. One of these legends of the of the rugby league that I don't feel he gets enough credit for what he deserves really. Yeah, hundred percent. And a lot of people don't see the work behind the scenes with them type of guys. Uh, and um, he. I mean, he, he had a pool at his house. He was one of these uh, posh physios, what Alan. He had a pool at his house, and we used to go for extras and work and uh, work on the as rehab, but actually in his pool. And that's you went back to like 1990, mid 90s, and that there where you know it were unheard of, and we were doing it in his house. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Simon Hunt asks, it's good to see you, Matt. Did you ever play rugby for any teams abroad? I did. I, I had a full season, Simon, at um, 1995 year. Um, I'd had a torrid time again with injuries at, at the Eagles. Um, and I'm one of my best friends, Glenn Reilly, Malcolm, obviously his dad, uh, legend in the game, Malcolm Reilly, he went over and coached Newcastle Knights, you'll remember. And there were, there were a mass, there were five of us all went over, me and a few of my best friends, and you'll, you'll recognise one of the names, Alex Thompson, who played with Eagles, big yep. mush. Um, we all went over to, to Australia and we had a season there and we played for South Newcastle within the, the Newcastle comp and that was a tough old comp, that real tough old comp. <laughs> again, but again, I was dogged with, with an ankle injury which kept me out for a massive amount mm. of time. But Mush, Mush were awesome there. He, he went out there and they and they and and obviously they all stayed out there. So Alex Thompson got married and stayed out there. Glenn really got married and stayed out there and had, had children and they're still out there now. Mm. Yeah, seems I, seems half of the Eagles is out there now. Martin Wood, Show it, yeah, all of them. Yeah, I came back to uh, to to Sunny Cass and played with the Eagles. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it weren't Sunny Cass that day in '97 uh, when it was just a torrential downpour, and I think Linton Stott jumped into the shower because he was going to get hypothermia otherwise. Yeah, it was a complete that, yeah. downpour. I remember that day, just standing in the stands. This is supposed to be summer rugby, this, and just yeah, seeing you guys. Good. Oh dear. Well, I'm not going to keep you much longer, mate, because I know I said I'd only do it 30 yeah. minutes with you. But on behalf of everyone at Sheffield Eagles, thank you so much for doing this, my man. Thank you ever so much. Very best of luck with you coming up in the coming season with Castleford. Send our love to Daryl and Sh Ryan and all the other guys. And we hope everything, oh, your success this year. And not Leeds Rhinos off their perch, please. Go, Benny. Yeah. I want to see, I want to see Cass win a final now. I want to see you guys win it, just to see you guys. It'd be great to see you, but thanks ever so much. Hope you have a great, great year, my man. I really do. Thank you once again for doing this. It really is a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure, Dean. Thanks for listening, everybody. You take care of yourself, all right? Thank you. Thank Bye. Bye-bye, mate. Bye-bye, mate. Take care. And there we go. And that was Matty Crowder, ex Sheffield Eagles player, current physio with Castleford Tigers. I'm sorry it was somewhat, but he just said it. We only said about 30 minutes, but they, they, it's, it's fair enough, wouldn't it? When it anyway, we're going to talk about what happened this week. Um, we did it in the other, other section of this uh, broadcast, which I had to stop. Right. On Monday night, um, there's a thing happening called the Eagles with the chat with the players and with the fans. And uh, on Monday night, me, Katie, Zach, Wiley, Steve, Liz and a quite a few, quite a few of the fans. We all got together with Matt James, James Glover, Liam, and Mark, and we all sat down and we talked about things we're doing with the Eagles and life was living with lockdown. We did a great, great, uh, great hour. Hour even brought. We always said it was going to be thirty minutes because somebody wanted to watch Coronation Street, but that went out of the window. So it was on for about an hour, an hour and a half. We had a great, great time. Um, if you're gonna do it. Get it info info at shepherdeagles.com. Please, please register your interest. I promise you, it is fantastic to get involved with it. Everybody started taking the Mickey out of the background of me. Nobody wants to see a green screen, so I just put this on, and uh, I think this this works brilliant. Um, I just thought my personal thing of that day that that meeting was it was great to hear Matty and James talk about their roadbacks from injuries, and to hear exactly what they've been doing with lockdown and getting forward and Mark and Mark's now turning into a Dave Grohl lookalike because if you've seen his beard and everything, we swear that he's going to start doing a full fighters tribute band. Really, really convinced now. Um, 
Liam was telling us all about the buildings and the builders and everything like that. I am not saying a word about the stadium. That is now a stadium-free zone. What I did say about Monday was, please, 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 if you are at this moment in time, you're just a little bit down and you think there's no way out, please, please get in contact with Eagles and get on and we'll get you get you on that Monday. Um, if you want to do it, I'll, I'll come on Zoom. I'll put Zoom up every night. I mean, if the Eagles just want to chat about the Eagles, we can do Zoom. We can do a for supporters get together on Zoom. We can do it any night you wish. I'll just give me the word. I'll put this Zoom up and we'll go live on Facebook. Or we don't even have to go on Facebook. We can come off and we can just chat amongst ourselves, have a cup of tea, a chat and do whatever you wish. It just uh, don't feel, don't feel as though it's the walls are closing in on you. Um, also, we did, um, what else have we got on Wednesday, Monday? Um, we also talked about the future of this program. What I'm going to do right now is, as much as I love talking with the Wembley 98 guys and as much as I love talking about the good old days, we're now going to switch. We're now going to talk about 2021. We're going to get the current Sheffield Eagles squad on. We're going to get the current players, the current coaching staff, the current physios. The whole shebang. We're going to get them all on here from now on. From now on, we're going to get the players of Sheffield Eagles. And that's the way where I want to go and everything. So if you've got any quick questions or anything like that, you want to ask anything like that, please, please do. We're going to go forward now. We're going to, I'm going to get in contact with Mark and Liam. They said they're going to help with some of the guys. We're going to get the new signings on, get the old guys on, get Joel Fowle, get Izzy, get, get Thax. Get the whole gang, get the whole gang Sheffield Eagles because that's what we want to do. We want to see Sheffield Eagles back. We want to see Sheffield Eagles back on time and getting back to their old ways. Um, who knows what the future brings, but um, I'm going to, uh, I can't wait. I really can't. It's just going to be an amazing thing. Thank you so much, by the way, for all, all the nice comments, the nice things about the setup we've got and everything and saying how professional it looks. I'm going to stick my neck out right now because I'm saying this on Monday. I have not had as much support and thanks as I do over the last five, six months with Eagles chat. I've put in the effort to put in to give you guys the chat and everything that you guys deserve. This green screen, nothing. The new setup, the microphones, the new computers, it's nothing to me. It's just to make it because you guys deserve it and you guys are going to get it. And that's the way we're going to go from now on. I promise you now we will go on to bigger and bigger and bigger and better things. I can't speak highly enough. Okay. Right. I'm going to finish off. I'm going to get out of here. I've got another thing to plan for, which is my debut on the streaming. If anybody looks, anybody wants, you'll find it on Facebook. It's easy to see. You'll still see me dressed up with this hat on, but in a complete different outfit. Um, anything else if we've got planned coming up? Um, right. No, not really. I don't think there's anything that uh, we've got. Is there anything you guys want to ask before I finish? Please do so. Um, I'll put myself wide open for this, uh, just for a few moments. So if there's got anything in that chat room that you want to ask me. Um, in fact, um, I've got something to ask you guys. Give me one second. Please, please be there one second, please. Oh, here it is. Now, I need a favor. I got this last week. I got this jersey last week, right? It's a rare one that was only worn once in a game at Bramall Lane. Can somebody help me with the signatures? Because I think I'm, I know there's a few there. There's Andrew Henderson, Andy Henderson, there's Mark Aston there. Uh, all these are the great, great signatures here. If anybody can help me, with the team of that day, so I can get an idea of the signatures, I will be very, very, very grateful. So if anybody can help me, I would love it. If anybody can help me with the signatures for this, um, it is a rare one. It is going to be pride of place in my collection. I got there. This is the craziest thing. This shirt came about. Uh, a gentleman contacted me and said he's got a training shirt for sale, a Sheffield Eagles training shirt that's got homophobia on the front. And I went, let me have a look. And he showed me that because he couldn't find any pictures of it. And I went, that's not a training shirt. So I bought it and got it delivered this week. And uh, we went from there. But um, there you go. I mean, it was only ever worn once. So I think it's rare as anything. It's just like a Wembley 98 shirt, isn't it, really? Only worn once. 
But uh, there you go. And um, if anybody can help me with the signatures, please, please get in contact with me because I would love to get all the signatures down and uh, see how far we get with that jersey. Now, also, we've got some, uh, we've got a, uh, Got little competitions coming up. We've got some more things coming up for you guys to uh, keep yourselves occupied. So, listen, what we're going to do now is I'm going to say, because sorry, nobody's going to want to ask me a question. So, that's great. And nobody, no, nobody wants to ask me anything. Yes, I get away with it once again. So, I'm going to say farewell. I'm going to say good night. Thanks ever so much to everybody for the support. Uh, love to everybody at this moment. And uh, thanks, everybody, to Matt. Thank, thanks ever so much to our very special guest, Matt Crowder, tonight. We'll see you next week. Remember, Monday nights on Zoom gets you interest in. If you think, you, if you, even if you just want to chat to the lads, get yourself on. It's, it's brilliant to chat. So I can't, I mean, I love the fact that it was afterwards. I told my wife, I said, that's been amazing. You won't believe how much it helps. And I promise you it won't. So if you're on your own or something like that, or you just need it, uh, but uh, no, I mean, Katie, do not ever apologize for all the questions. It was, no, they're great questions. Please, please, please. Info at sheffordeagles.com. The link is on the page. Liam's put it on the page. Please, please, please get yourself on it and everything. I might even come back on next week. I loved it. I think it's fantastic doing it once a week and then stuff. And you just chat to the to lads and James, and all the other stuff about it. It's, it's great, great. It's a great, great hour. You promise you won't regret it. Um, credit has got to go to New York City Knights as well for the idea for this. Um, Liam made that perfectly clear on Monday. So York City Knights, God, God bless you. Thank you very much for this wonderful idea. And uh, I can't see, if, I can see a lot of teams going to be doing this from now on. This is fantastic. And I love every single person, everything. So you guys take care of yourselves. Stay up, eh? My, my, if you want to, anybody wants to chat, want to come on Zoom, let me know. I'll come on Zoom within half an hour. I'll send you the invite and you chat about it. Chats away about the Eagles. Funny, bad times, anything you want. We can chat on here about the Eagles. Eagles chats, not just for us, it's just for everybody. And that includes you that's watching this. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, as always. I, like I said before, I've had the vaccine now. I've got to wait 12 weeks for the next one. If anybody wants me to ask about that, please do. I'll, I'll <laughs> the COVID vaccine is done. So uh, I'm very, very pleased for that one. But uh, anyway, I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to let you guys have a great Wednesday evening. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Good night. God bless. I'll see you next week for another exciting episode of Eagles Chat. Take care. Bye-bye.